Welcome, I'm Chef Deborah from Roca's Bakery in Greensboro, North Carolina, and welcome to my kitchen today. You can visit us on our website at rocasbakery.com where we have our online store and all types of great information for catering and, and corporate and party events. And you can also visit Rosie, our bakery and coffee truck at the Piedmont Triad Farmer's Market on the weekend starting in May uh, from 7.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Uh, look for the red and white striped bakery truck with Rosie on the side of it. Today we're gonna be making our famous blueberry glazed biscuits. So we're gonna start with three cups of flour. We have half a cup of sugar. We've got two teaspoons of baking powder, a half a teaspoon of baking soda, and one and a quarter teaspoons of table salt. Uh, we do have about a cup and a half of fresh blueberries, and we have a cup and two thirds of whole buttermilk. Everything has to be cold. We are not making cakes, where I, if you've seen other episodes, or uh, we're making cookies where everything has to be room temperature. When we're making butter, we're making pie doughs, everything needs to be cold so they turn out nice and super flaky. Cut your butter up and put it in the freezer for about five minutes and chill it extra hard so that it's nice, nice and cold. So we're gonna start out by measuring our flour. Now when we, when we measure our flour for cakes or biscuits or anything like that, we want it, what we call aerate the flour a little bit. So if you have it in a big container uh, or your canister on your kitchen counter, we just want to move it around a little bit with your cup. And then we just want to take some up and if you have a, a, a butter knife or a bench scraper and just scrape it off like that. So otherwise, we'll, if you will pack it too much in the, um, in the measuring cup and you'll add too much flour to the recipe. So we want to be sure that it's the right amount. So we've got our three cups of butter. We're going to go ahead and put that aside here. We're going to add all of our dry ingredients at once. We've got our half a cup of sugar. We've got our baking soda and baking uh, powder. And we've got our salt. And we're going to do this with our fingers. Biscuits, you cannot make biscuits with anything else but your fingers. So we're going to push this around a little bit. Now, one of the reasons that we add baking soda and baking powder to this recipe is because we're using buttermilk and buttermilk is an acid. And anytime you see a recipe with buttermilk in it or lemon juice or anything like that, you're gonna more than likely see baking soda because baking soda is activated by the liquid, baking powder is activated by the heat. So we get a double leavening process when you're using both of those ingredients. So we're going to add the lemon zest as well. And the lemon with the blueberries is just absolutely fantastic. So we're gonna just aerate that lemon zest a little bit. So we're going to take our 10 tablespoons of cold butter we're gonna dump it in here, and then we're going to break it up, as you've seen me, if you watch any of our other episodes you've seen me do uh, before. Danish Blitz dough or our puff pastry dough, we're just gonna smush the butter and make long, thin pieces of butter so that when we add the buttermilk, when we mix it together, it's gonna to be nice and flaky. So we're also going to, uh, when these biscuits come out of the oven and cool a little bit, we're gonna brush them with um, the melted butter and honey mixture uh, together, and then we're going to glaze them. So while the buttermilk, or while the biscuits are in the uh, oven baking, you can go ahead and make the glaze. And that is um, a couple cups of powdered sugar, and a teaspoon of vanilla, an eighth of a cup of cream or milk, whatever you have on hand and mix it together until it's smooth. And you want uh, a fairly thin glaze. Uh, if you watched our episode where we made our Madeline cookies, we did glazes for that. And so you can go back to uh, watch one of our other episodes for our Madeline cookies and uh, see how that glaze is made. But it's very simple to do. Just stir it together until it's nice and smooth. So we don't want to get this completely incorporated. And I actually think because this flour feels kind of dry that I need a little bit more butter. And I'm just gonna break a little bit of pieces off here. That, especially in the winter time, sometimes flour has less hydration or less moisture in it. And so you have to be aware, that's why you, you need to get your hands in the, in the mixture. Otherwise you wouldn't be able to tell. But it does need, it's probably gonna need a couple tablespoons more of butter. 
to make the kind of biscuit that we want, nice rich biscuit. And if you've never made biscuits before and you're afraid to make biscuits, don't be, it's really easy. Just follow this recipe. And if you don't like blueberries, you don't have to put blueberries in this. Uh, you can make maple biscuits and uh, you can do a maple flavoring instead of vanilla. You could put uh, cranberries in this and do a cranberry walnut biscuit. So you can do this as a basic biscuit recipe and you can add your own fruit into it. So if you do use a dried fruit, I would, I would suggest that you uh, hydrate or rehydrate the fruit. Uh, put whatever amount of dried fruit you want to use and, um, in a little bit of water and uh, put it in the microwave for about 30 or 45 seconds and let it sit for about 20 minutes and that'll re rehydrate the fruit so that you're not putting dried fruit in the biscuit and your biscuits will be a lot moister that way. So we've got our, our butter and flour together. So we're just going to make a well in the center. And uh, I usually don't pour all of the liquid in there because I don't want to over pour. Uh, but since the flour was a little dry, more than likely we're, we're going to need all of it. And we just want to lift from the bottom. We don't want to stir. We don't want to mash it down with our hands. We're looking at just lightly, almost like a folding action. And we're going to need the rest of this for sure. We don't want to crush, uh, crush the butter into the flour at all. Let me grab a little bit of flour in a bowl. Uh, we're going to need to dust the counter with. We're going to put our blueberries in here now. I tell you, this one one's escaping from me. Now you want to be careful after you add the fruit. You don't want to crush the fruit either. You will crush some, especially if you're using fresh blueberries, just because some of the blueberries might be a little softer than the other, they might be a little riper. But we just want to try and lift it from the center and fold it over. And if you get too much on your spatula, just get it off and put it back in the bowl. You don't want purple biscuits. <laughs> so if you work the dough too much, they'll become tough and the blueberries will break and they'll turn your dough a color. So we don't want that. So let me grab some flour here. We're going to get a, a good dusting of flour on, the, on your board. Let me move some of these items for you here so you can see what I'm doing. And we're just gonna lightly flour. Now you can actually pat this into a, a like a, a nine by nine pan if you wanna bake it in squares and then cut it. But what we're going to do today is we're going to use our scoop and I have a fairly large scoop here and we're going to put the biscuits um, and they're considered drop biscuits. And we're just gonna put uh, two beside each other that far because they're all uh, about three inches apart because they will actually raise up pretty good so and these are big biscuits if you want to make smaller biscuits by all means do smaller biscuits if you want to roll them out uh, let me show you how to roll out some biscuits so that you or pat out some biscuits so that if you don't want to do a drop biscuit you'll see that technique as well so let me take some of this dough here now when i make our biscuits uh, for the bakery our scones rather I do almost a fold and roll like we do for laminated dough and it actually does a really nice job of um, almost laminating the biscuits and makes a higher, gives it a little bit of a higher rise. So I do this three times and turn it 90 degrees and this way you can cut your biscuits out with a biscuit cutter. Uh, if you don't have a biscuit cutter you can even cut them with your bench knife like this. If you want small biscuits you can cut them again like this. So you have like biscuit bites if you're looking at some kind of a, a tray that you want to present for a breakfast buffet or something like that. You can, so you, I mean, this is a, a great basic recipe. So you can, you can basically do them any shape that you want. So we're going to get these in the oven and we're going to at 425 degrees. Uh, they'll take between 15 to 18 minutes to bake. And then we'll come back when they're just come out of the oven, we'll, we'll glaze them. We'll see you in a few minutes. So it's been about 18 minutes since we put our biscuits in the oven, so we're going to get the biscuits out and glaze them and brush them with our honey and butter and get them on our plate. As you can see, they're beautifully golden brown 
They look gorgeous. So we're going to, uh, when we take them out of the oven, we've got our honey and our melted butter that we had uh, mixed early. And we just want to brush, brush the tops of them. So we're getting a little bit of sugar in the biscuit. We're getting some honey and some butter on top of the biscuit. And then we're going to add some more glaze. So it's just a really nice. And you think with all this, the sweet that we're brushing, that it would be sweet, sweet, but it's not. It is not a savory biscuit by any stretch of the imagination. This is a southern blueberry biscuit. So uh, the South, we like our sweets and we love our blueberry biscuits. So this is one of my husband's favorite, favorite, favorite biscuits. Now I had mentioned uh, before we put these in the oven that if you want to put it in an eight by eight pan, you can do that, but you need to, I want to talk about the baking time. The baking time or a nine by nine pan because they do raise pretty high so it's almost going to look like a blueberry cake rather than a biscuit so that's why i suggest putting it in a nine by nine pan because it won't be quite as tall when you put it in the pan take a knife and just score down into the pan with a knife so that it scores the dough so that when you bake it there's marks there so that you can cut it more easily because it is a biscuit dough so that it will tend to crumble if you try to cut it so scoring it before it's baked is the great way to do it the same degree, 425 degrees, for probably 20 to 25 minutes and start checking it at about 20 minutes to see. And if you need to bake it longer than 25 because your oven might not bake as hot, uh, then, then just keep it in there until the tester comes out clean and it's nice and golden brown on the top. So we're going to go ahead and put these aside for a minute and we're going to make our glaze. And because I love um, lemon with my blueberry, we're going to use lemon juice uh, the, it's, it's a juice of two medium-sized lemons and we're going to put just a little bit of uh, vanilla in it just to give it a little bit of warmth and we're going to see um, how much more liquid we need to add to get the consistency of the glaze that I want. So it, if you've watched any of our other episodes uh, you'll know that it just takes a tiny bit of liquid to bring down two cups of confection sugar and it looks like we might need just maybe a tablespoon of milk. Now you can also add more lemon juice if you want, if you want a little bit more lemony. But I find sometimes that uh, the juice of two lemons with this glaze and this recipe works great to balance out the flavors because you don't necessarily want to have an overpowering lemon flavor that will take away from the fresh blueberries because the blueberries are after, they're the star of this uh, biscuit. So the, the little bit of lemon zest that we put in it and the juice that we use in the glaze is supposed to enhance the flavor of the blueberries and not overpower it. And I think that looks pretty good. So the juice of two medium lemons and about a tablespoon of milk. So we're gonna leave it at that. And we wanna do this while the biscuits are hot. So if you have a, um, a cooling tray at home, by all means you can, you can use that. If you don't, you can just take a, a tablespoon and you can just do it right on the tray. You can see how glossy the, uh, the biscuits are from the honey and the butter. This makes me hungry. I think I might have to eat one of these. The warmth of the biscuit will actually kind of uh, heat up the glaze a little bit. And you don't want to put too much on it. You just want to put a little bit because we do have the sweet uh, honey on there already. If you want to make a looser glaze and have a lighter glaze on your biscuit, just add a little bit more milk. It's your biscuit, so you get to make it how you want. You don't have to uh, eat someone else's biscuit and eat their glaze. You can do it exactly how your family likes it. So this spoon set that I brought with me to the filming studio belonged to my mother. And my mother passed in uh, May of, uh, June 18th of last year rather. And so I thought, you know, it'd be nice to take something from moms up here to, to share with everybody. So I've been, I've been using her measuring teaspoon set. And I think she had this when I was a little girl and I won't tell you how old I am, but um, it's been a long time ago. So she had it, I think it was probably a wedding present if I remember what she told me when her and dad got married. So mom, you're with us today, helping make our blueberry biscuits. And just let the, um, the biscuits cool and let them set for maybe, you know, six, seven, eight minutes, something like that. You want the, 
the glaze to set a little bit before you plate them. They don't last that long in my house. Uh, the glaze doesn't get to set. If the, my husband sees them on the counter, uh, they're, they're gone. So um, same with our grandkids. So we'll just go ahead and let, the, let them set up and then we'll put them on a plate for you and uh, then you'll be able to try them at home and enjoy the Southern Blueberry Biscuits with Glaze from Roca's Bakery. See you in a few minutes. So this is our uh, beautiful uh, Roca's Blueberry Glazed uh, Biscuits for your family to enjoy. Please try this recipe. It's absolutely uh, delectable and I know your families uh, are gonna absolutely love it. Uh, great for Christmas morning, New Year's, New Year's morning, or any morning, or afternoon, or after dinner snack that you would want. Uh, so join us in our next segment on this episode when we're going to be doing Roca's uh, banana pudding. So see you in a few minutes to uh, make that that special dessert. So we're back, uh, going to make our, our special banana pudding. So what we have done is we've made our pastry cream. So if you go watch episode 10 of our spring series, we have made our pastry cream on that episode. So you can follow along and make it. And I like to make it a day ahead of time and put it in the cooler so it's nice, it's nice and stiff. And uh, then we add some whipped cream, sweetened whipped cream, uh, which is called Chantilly cream, uh, to the pastry cream. And we fold it in and just let it sit in the cooler. Uh, you can assemble the banana pudding uh, at the same time, but make sure you make your pastry cream the day before so it sets overnight and it, uh, it sets up really nice and firm for you. So we've got probably eight uh, bananas sliced. We've got a nine by 13 dish, and of course the famous vanilla wafers. These are minis. Um, sometimes I use the minis, sometimes I use the regular size. Uh, it just depends on what, what your family likes. Um, my husband, he just likes the cookies, so <laughs> it doesn't matter what size. And we also have a bag of whipped cream fit with a star tip that I use to decorate the top because I keep saying we eat with our eyes first, and um, so we want it to look pretty. So uh, we're gonna put just a small amount, maybe a half a cup down on the bottom of the pan. We're gonna spread it out a little bit, and this is just so that the cookies will stick, so that they don't uh, slide around on the bottom when you're trying to put a layer of cookies on it just acts kind of like a glue and what I just do is I just take a bunch of my hand and I crush them up <laughs> I don't crush them up to a powder but just chunks because they're the minis so you can uh, you just break them up with your fingers crush them in your hands just so that they're broken up a little bit so that you don't get a big mouthful of cookie you can get the bananas and the cookie together and if you don't get them all broken up that's fine too and I think every southern woman has her own way of doing her banana pudding and uh, I think it depends on what kind of time you have. Um, I know a lot of women use the, in the Jell-O Instant uh, banana pudding. Some use the banana pudding and you know cook it on the stovetop. But I tell you, as a pastry chef, it just doesn't taste the same as fresh pastry cream. Now, if you want to flavor your pastry cream with a banana extract, please do that. I, do, I use a banana emulsion, which is a little bit different than an extract. Uh, we get from our, our wholesale supplier. So we want to put a good layer of cookies on the bottom. Now what I usually do when I make banana pudding is I put it in a, what we call a trifle bowl, which is uh, a bowl with straight up and down sides. It's on a little pedestal and you can get them um, at department stores sell them. They're less than $10 and it really makes a nice presentation and you can see all of the layering. So you're probably in a regular eight inch trifle bowl you can get three layers of banana pudding in there if you want to, which makes for nice if you're serving a large family. So we've got a good, a good amount of cookies there. We're gonna just go ahead and lay our bananas down in there. And I like a lot of banana pudding. You know, if you've ever been to someone's house or to a restaurant and they're making banana pudding, there's no bananas in the banana pudding. It's like, where's the bananas? And they got banana flavored pudding, but there's no real bananas. So I like to put a lot of bananas in my banana pudding. So it's basically just a, an assembly. Once you get the pastry cream made the day before, you know, whip your cream if you don't want to use fresh whipping cream, if you like Cool Whip better, that's completely up to you. So we're going to start then with a layer of pastry cream. Again, that's been lightened with our sweetened whipped cream or Chantilly cream. Put some blobs in here. And we're going to take our spatula and we're just going to spread it around. 
and then we're going to repeat it again. Now for those of you who don't live in the South and maybe have never had banana pudding, it is really, really good. It's a very traditional uh, Southern dessert. If you've never had it, you need to make it because it is absolutely wonderful. I remember uh, one time we were hosting a Habitat for Humanity uh, event at our house and we had uh, about 35, 40 kids from inner city Chicago that had never been out of the city before and I had a, a big uh, buffet set up on our carport. They had never had banana pudding, they didn't even know what it was, so all the boys wanted to, wanted to eat it but they were afraid to eat it. So they sent a couple of girls over to try it and uh, find out what, what was going on in that big old pan with all that stuff on it and the cookies. And, and so as soon as the girls gave them the high five that it was really, really good, it was devoured in less than five minutes. Just funny. <laughs> they had a good time eating southern cooking and southern desserts and playing football in our big yard. And it was a nice time. We've got cookies here. We're going to lay down more bananas. And you know, you don't have to be fussy with this. Uh, when I finish it off, I'm usually fussy about how it looks because I'm making it for the bakery and we do special decorating with it. But, um, you know, for the home baker, you don't have to be quite as fussy or you can if you're wanting to take it to church social for your homecoming lunch or whatever, it's a great thing to do. So we're going to add some more pastry cream. This nine by 13, this is about as much as we're gonna be, we're not gonna be able to get a third layer in here uh, by any stretch of the imagination. So we're just gonna carefully push it into the corners to fill everything and make sure your bananas are covered because all of you know that if you've had a sliced banana sitting on the counter, it turns brown very quickly. So the, the pastry cream will actually seal it so no air is getting to the bananas so they won't brown. We want to get enough so that we don't see shadows of banana through it either. So we could probably get the rest of this in there. Okay, so that's about done there. So we're going to go ahead and um, what I like to do, just as a more of a decoration, and place them around the outside like this, facing in so the dome side faces in. And it just gives it a nice little finish. And then we're going to do some little uh, edging with our whipped cream. I've got a piping, a star piping tip in here in my bag and it just make, gives it a real nice finish. And if you never hear me say it again, it's we eat with our eyes first. So make it pretty, even if it's for you, especially if it's for your family. You know, the kids and I, we used to, once a week we'd get our good china out and we'd, we'd eat on our good china because people put, you know, they have all this beautiful china and silver and crystal and it stays in a, the china cabinet and comes out at Christmas or Thanksgiving maybe. Never use it, but we always like to make uh, our, some of our weekly meals special, so we'd get out our crystal glasses and our fancy china, and the three of us would sit and, and eat together on fancy stuff, and I'd make a little bit of a fancy dessert or make it look fancy, and it was a nice time for kids to feel special. So we're gonna go ahead and our whipped cream's in our piping bag, make sure. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna do a little edge, a little shell border along the edge here. You can do a star border, and I'll show you how to do that in a minute. And if you've never worked with a piping bag before, it's very, very easy. As you can see, I just squeeze a little bit and then bring it up and move it forward, and it makes a little dome, and it looks like a shell. That's called a shell border. So you can, this is one of the very basic, easy kind of borders that you can learn to do. Whatever you feel like. If you feel like a rose that day, make rosettes. If you feel like a shell, make a shell. But you can see how pretty that makes it. And sometimes what I do is I just take and make little rosettes like this and I'll go all over the top of it. But today we're, we're not gonna have enough whipped cream. So we're just going to do one big uh, rosette in the center. Then I'd like to take a little bit more crushed cookies and put over the top, just as a finish. You know, if your family doesn't like whipped cream and you don't wanna put whipped cream on the top, you don't have to do it but I think it gives it a really nice uh, finished look to it. Like I said, I usually cover the top with the whipped cream, so make sure you whip enough cream so that you have enough to do it. It'll probably take about four cups a, on a pan this size. Stick a little cookie right in the top there. So there we go, that is uh, Roca's banana pudding. 
So we've done our delicious uh, tender blueberry glazed biscuits and our famous Roca's banana pudding. Uh, this is Chef Deborah from Roca's Bakery in Greensboro, North Carolina. Visit us at our website at rocasbakery.com or come to the P Piedmont Triad Farmer's Market in Greensboro, North Carolina every weekend starting in May from 7.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. and look for Rosie the Red and White Bakery Coffee Truck and we'll have some of our delicious pastries and desserts and all of our full espresso bar there and Italian cream sodas. Uh, this is Chef Deborah signing off for today. Thank you for coming to my kitchen.